after all, that very contraption was put together by Freddy Lugard by force. That's one thing people don't understand, that Lugard killed people to bring Nigeria together. And the killing of people to disintegrate the zoo shouldn't come to anybody as a surprise. Our promise is very simple. If they fail to give us Biafra, Somalia will look like a paradise compared to what will happen to that zoo. What's going on everyone? Hope you are having a beautiful time wherever you are watching from. So I found a video from 10 years ago. 10 years! That was a long time ago. That's one decade. It's a video of Unnam the Kanon. And this was from his interview with Sahara TV where he said Somalia will look like a paradise if Nigeria government failed to give them Biafra. And joining us now, uh, he came into the United States from London. He is Namde Kano. He is the director of the Radio Biafra in London. Namde, welcome to Sahara TV. No, thank you very much. So let's start with uh, the national conference going on in Nigeria. I know that um, several groups were not allowed to be part of it because um, they don't want people to go to the no-go area. What is your take on the national conference going on? Is um, is a discussion forum. It's been going on for very many years, as you can recall. This is about the fourth incident or major gathering of this magnitude happening in that very place they call Nigeria. It has no resonance. It doesn't resonate with us at all because it is the same people that caused the problem that are going into this conference. How can you ask people that created a problem to go and solve it? I've not seen where that's ever happened in the world before. So our take on it is that people are free to talk. I believe in democracy and in the right and freedom of anyone to speak. So if people wish to gather to speak on a range of issues they consider very pertinent to their problems, then we welcome it. But in terms of affecting our overall outcome or in a way trying to improve our lives, I very much doubt it. If you look at the caliber of people that are sending there to represent what I regard, unquote, Igbo interest, you will see how distressing it is that a man that killed and murdered his own people at Asaba in the shape of Oba Sanda, Ike Mwachuku, is there representing the same people that he killed just by virtue of the fact that his name is Igbo, which we find abominable. Someone like Mwobode is there. Mwobode was instrumental in the failure of Ekweme at the PDP convention in Joss in 1999. In fact, he left his own mother tongue and was speaking Hausa. He is there also representing us, so it doesn't have any meaning for us. What we're saying to them is this. If you go there and negotiate any other thing apart from Biafra, you better not come back because our people will be waiting for that very person. The zoo has come to an end. They keep killing our people. And for how long are we going to allow this contraption concocted by Frederick Lugard to continue to waste the lives of innocent people? Now, let, let me stop you there. You said something that I'm interested in. Uh, people who look at several Biafran groups and movements uh, always look at this kind of statement, like the one you made now. Let him not come back home, otherwise um, um, he will explain to us. But, but we know that they will go there and they will come back home. Uh, but, but, and what will happen? You see, are you just, is this uh, a statement that there is something that will happen? Because one of the things that happen in, 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 in Africa, in Nigeria, and wherever you look at is that there are no consequences. And, and people who try to force consequences to, to, to be uh, exerted end up saying things and nothing happens. What will happen to Ikemwachuku when he comes back home? Because you know he's not going there to negotiate Biafra. You know that. Of course, we know that very well. Okay. What will happen to him is this. Already, we know that some of them live in Abuja and Lagos Axis. There is nobody that speaks for the Yoruba nation that lives in anywhere in Igbo land or in Biafra land. There is no prominent Hausa person that lives anywhere in Biafra land. What we are saying to this man and his likes is that, of course, they will underestimate us because those that have gone before us have made threats and didn't carry it out. This time it is different. If we can place the name Biafra on satellite, if we can broadcast so that the whole world can hear us every blessed day, if we are in over 70 countries around the world with over 5 million listeners, there is nothing we cannot do 
this time around things are very very different believe you me very very different and very soon the world will hear about it because the only language that people in the zoo understand is the language of violence and force after all that very contraption was put together by freddy lugard by force that's one thing people don't understand that lugard killed people to bring nigeria together and the killing of people to disintegrate the zoo shouldn't come to anybody as a surprise our promise is very simple if they fail to give us Biafra, Somalia will look like a paradise compared to what will happen to that zoo. It is a promise, it is a, pre it's a pledge, and it's also a threat to them. They must understand this, that we've had enough of this nonsense. These criminals cannot be stealing money belonging to everybody. These same men cannot be responsible for the length and breadth of the death, the, the abominable things they continue to do to the people in that very country. Every day, every week, every month and every year, we cannot allow that to continue. It's impossible for us to let that continue because this nonsense has to come to an end. Now, what now, the now, in Ghana must happen. Now, let me ask you, um, when, when his name was announced as the leader of the Igbo delegation, so, the, so why didn't your group uh, question the governors that appointed him the leader of the Igbo, Igbo people to the national conference? It's because the governors you have in Biafra land are an extension of the Hausa Fulani hegemony. They were appointed by Hausa Fulani men to come and do the bidding of Hausa Fulani oligarchy in that very part of the world. So it didn't come to us at all as a surprise. Every Igbo governor you have has a Hausa Fulani godfather. Hausa Fulani people put them there. They are there to do their bidding. If you go to Imo State, you'll understand what I'm saying. Rosa, Rocha Sokorocha, or whatever his name is, has single-handedly Islamized the whole of Imo State. And that very process is also ongoing in a Boeing state. Are you talking about Theodore Oche? He is pathetic and laughable. These are the men they gave to us, is it P2B? Have you, you're a journalist yourself, Okonkwo. Nobody has ever asked P2B about a zoo river. How many people he killed at a zoo river and dumped their bodies there? They are also human beings with fathers and mothers. No one ever complained. These are the caliber of people, the caliber of leeches and cabals they have imposed on us. And we are here to resist it. And we shall, this year, to be very precise. Now, let me ask, because there are the, uh, the group, uh, the Movement for the Actualization of the Sovereign Nation of Biafra. Uh, I'm familiar with the group, and I know that one of their principal ideas is that this should be done in a peaceful way. Is your group opposed to a peaceful way of achieving Biafra? Or are you uh, in support of both sides, whether peaceful or non-peaceful? What is your group behind? I support both sides. If they give us peace, that is wonderful. If they decide to go down the route of violence, then I can give you this assurance today. Of course, your worldwide listeners and viewers may be able to note this. If they do not give us Biafra, there will be nothing living in that very zoo they call Nigeria. Nothing will survive there, I can assure you. You see, 1967 to 1970 is not 2013 to 2015. We had scientists then, now we have men that can make things happen even better than what we had in the late 60s. So that should ring as a warning to all of them that we are not joking. I do not believe in peaceful actualization or whatever rubbish is called. I have never seen where you become free by peaceful means. If you know, you tell me. I am a student of contemporary history. I have never come across anywhere in history books where you get your freedom out of a peaceful process. It's never happened. Never, ever, ever. Now, let me ask you, if you look at the world today, look at a place like Scotland, where our people, or the Scottish, are in the process of uh, trying to see if they will get their own country. Uh, basically, the way they went about it was to say, we want uh, to be separate from the British uh, England, and they, they are putting a, a process where they will vote, uh, and a majority of them say they want to move, and they will move. Now, I want to ask you, do you think that if you ask majority of Igbo people today whether they should be part of Nigeria or, or part of Biafra, that you have the numbers that will come to your side of the argument? Yes, we have over 98% of our people willing. The other 2% are those fathered by Hausa Fulani men as a consequence of the war. Everybody born as a Biafran, everybody born as an Igbo, Ibibio, Efik, Anang, Ebanke, 
anybody born as a job has freedom implanted in their DNA. That is why we have autonomous communities. Have you seen anywhere in the world where you have autonomous communities? Have you seen? The answer is no. The reason why we have autonomous communities is because we are born to be free. We want to be autonomous. And that freedom must be carried right all the way to the heart of governance in this Zoological Republic of Nigeria. We must make this very, very clear and abundantly clear to our people that our quest is for us to be free. You mentioned Scotland. Scotland is already a free nation. What they are seeking in Scotland is independence. We are not free and we are not independent either. So that is why the same scenario doesn't apply at all. In Scotland, as a Scottish person, you have your own parliament. You can do whatever you, have, you like. You even have what is called tax raising powers. You can raise taxes or you can lower them as you like. The Scottish Court of Sessions is in charge of the entire legal process in now, Scotland. Now, 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 let me let me ask you. I know, I know. Why don't your group push for that in a place like the National Conference that is going on now to get that kind of auto autonomy uh, um, first, rather than um, now pushing for independence without whether Nigeria wants it or not? The fact of the matter is that the structures doesn't exist the institutions that will allow the emergence of a democratic Biafra within a peaceful setting does not currently exist in that very place you call Nigeria. Mind you, that is the name of a river. Up north, you call them Niger, which is French. If you come down a little bit, it is called Niger, which is English. And the people that live around it are called Nigerians. The only place or part of the only place in Black Africa where you name a people after a river. I have never seen any civilized country in the world where people are named after a river is never happened before. The people own the river, not the other way around. By tacitly accepting the word and the tag Nigeria, what it means is that you never had any history until Frederick Lugard came, which is a fallacy, it's an abomination, and nobody should be saying that. Coming back to what you said, there is no way we can run for office as a political party. We tried it with Abga and it did not work. These issues we are trashed out very well is that the people that control the levers of power within Nigeria are not politically sophisticated enough to appreciate the final point of political discourse. In other words, that disputes resolution can best be conducted within a political setting where people are civilized. And I'm afraid to say that what I see in the zoo they call Nigeria, people are not civilized. Now, uh, we are out of time, but let me ask you, uh, last week, I believe, the Biafran Zionist movement claimed a responsibility for the attack at uh, the attack to the Enugu State Government House. Um, are you familiar with that group, and what was the mission of that attack? I am familiar with a lot of groups. That name rings a bell. Anybody ca that can do anything to disrupt the present orthodoxy of governance by a group of very corrupt cabals is welcome. In that regard, I welcome what they did at Tenugu, and I hope that people can come out and join us when the time comes to overthrow the very corrupt, inept old men and women in charge of that very place, because Biafra must exist. It's our right to make sure it happens. All right, uh, Namde Kano, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. <clears throat> So let's analyze some things Unamde Kano said in this video. He said, how can you ask people who create a problem to solve them? And that is a fair point to make. You know, how can you ask people who create a problem or who create problems to find solutions to, to those problems? Sometimes people create problems and they eventually find solutions to those problems but in Nigeria it's impossible for people who create problems to find solutions to the same problem so when he made this statement I'm very sure that he's talking about the political elites you know because how do you ask people who are corrupt to fight corruption <laughs> for example Buhari was championed as a corruption fighter but look what happened when Buhari came to power you know you can't fight corruption with corruption so it's it makes a lot of sense that Unam Dekano said you can't create a problem and ask the same people to solve the problem and then 
he threatened the political elites from the southeast. He said, if you go there to negotiate anything aside Biafra, you better not come back because our people will be waiting for you. <laughs> so that is a threat to the political elites. And if you ask me, I like this kind of statement, you know, because I don't like when people dine and whine with corrupt political elites. For example, these people should not be so comfortable coming to the same church we attend because they can't go to Abuja or to the state, you know, capital and make our lives miserable. Then come to, to our churches on Sunday and say uh, we are one of them or they are one of us. I think if people are so corrupt, if people who are meant to provide us with basic amenities, people who are meant to make our life easy, if, if they keep putting us in situations where we are, you know, being miserable, then they shouldn't have that freedom of being around us. You know, we need to create a very hostile environment where when they come to, they, they realize that we don't like them. We need to let them know we don't like them. You know, we can't just smile with people who have stolen and looted our treasury dry. So, on this point of Unam Dikano, I think I stand with him. You know, if you are one of the politicians who go out there to fight for yourself, for your political ambition, instead of fighting for people you claim to represent, then you don't deserve to have a peace or you don't deserve to have peace of mind whenever you are around us. And finally, Kanu said, if they fail to give us Biafra, Somalia will look like a paradise compared to Nigeria. You know, <laughs> I think when Kanu said this, he has his reasons, you know, he's willing to fight for a cause. But you and I know that no one, not a single person, can make Nigeria look like Somalia. No, not a single soul. You can end up making the Southeast look like Somalia. For saying you will make Nigeria look like a Somalia is, you know, it's you overrating yourself. To be sincere, because not a single soul, I repeat, not a man can make Nigeria look like Somalia. Was that a threat to national security? No, because if you said that was a threat to national security, I mean, people have said worse than Unam Dikano and they are still working free. So to be fair enough, if you say Unam, Unam the Kano should be locked up for saying Somalia will look like a paradise compared to uh, what will happen in Nigeria. Then people who have said similar things should also be in jail. What I'm saying is we all should be equal in the eyes of the law. You know, every man should be equal in the eyes of the law. If Unam the Kano can be picked up because he said some things, then others should be picked up for what they said. You know, because it makes no sense that you pick me up for saying something, then you let another person go for saying similar thing. But at the end of the day, I've always said, war is not the solution. And I stand by my words. War should not be the only option. We should still be able to, you know, have a round table discussion and find a diplomatic solution for now thank you all for watching this video and see you guys on the next one i remain ayotade peace out